investigating an elaborate scheme. Two detectives come to my door. They said, well, you've been scammed for your house. Victims across Ontario signed up for a mortgage they never wanted. How much is that mortgage for? It's at least $500,000. And a bill their families say could cost them their house. This was our foreclosure notice. Feeling roped in and ripped off. How is that being paid for? It's not being paid for, that's the problem. But who's behind it? I feel like they've been victimized. This is your marketplace. We're on the trail of one of the most elaborate scams we've ever seen. Victims across Ontario lured in after a knock at the door. To try to unravel who's behind it, we're knocking on those same doors. I'm David with CBC Marketplace. Meeting those who say they or their families have been tricked into a mortgage they cannot afford. Did you want to have a $230,000 mortgage? No. How much is the interest rate? 25%. I was scammed. I'm probably going to lose the rest of the house now. Are you worried about losing this house? Uh, I worry, yeah. I worry, yeah. Our investigation begins in Bowmanville. Hi. How are you? Melissa, how are you? Come on in. Thank you. With Melissa Irons and Jeff Wagner. Oh, that was a good one. They say Jeff's 79-year-old stepdad, Carl Hoffman, is an easy target after a brain aneurysm years ago took away his ability to make simple decisions. Carl's a very kind of simple man. He just sits at home, watches TV. He doesn't get out very much. But he's now at risk of having his home taken away. Discovering equipment had been installed throughout Carl's house was a red flag. So here's a, a Nest thermostat that was installed. Does Carl know how to use it? Absolutely not. He has to call me there every time to adjust the temperatures. All right, show me what else. Uh, well, we have a Google smart smoke detector. All right. The money for all this came from long-term contracts and liens against his property, meaning his house was being used as collateral. Carl has water softeners upon water softeners. But Melissa says Carl had no idea. And what's this? A surge protector, I believe that's what a they call it. surge protector? Yeah. Why would he need a surge protector? I have no idea. All right, what did they do in here? Uh, so they replaced the toilet. Mm -hmm. They only realize something's fishy after finding workers renovating Carl's bathroom. I was irate scared for him, worried, wondering who these strangers were and how they got into his home. He thought they were here to use the washroom, not renovate the washroom. They say Carl didn't want the reno and couldn't afford it. Making matters worse, it was shoddy. They came back three times to fix a leak. They weren't able to fix a leak, so I had to step in and fix the problem myself. Yeah. And they're still finding problems. Oh, wax rings totally cracked. This plumber discovering the toilet was installed improperly. What's no rings? Five it's bucks? Two bucks. It's two bucks? Yeah. Carl's family believes it's part of an elaborate scam designed to take his home after finding Carl was signed up for a mortgage worth $130,000 with payments beyond his limited income and an interest rate set at 25%. Have you ever heard of a mortgage at 25%? Absolutely not, no. Carl can't pay, leading to a dramatic development. Uh, this was our foreclosure notice that was uh, delivered to Carl. We've had to get a, a lawyer involved to quickly put some stop on of this stuff so that we can try to figure it all out so that he doesn't lose everything. This is all he has, all he's ever had. To understand the multi-layered scheme, Hey, Greg. Hi, David. How, How are, are you? How you doing? Good to meet you. You as well. Come on in. We're with Carl's lawyer, Greg Whedon. They would just, you know, sell him things that he didn't need. It just evolved into a, an elaborate scam. They enter into these loans, essentially. They're, they're soliciting, you know, renovations and loans at the same time. Remember that surge protector? Documents show the people who created the lien for it are the same people behind the mortgage. They're converting these liens. The same people show up and say, we can help you consolidate your debt. 
and we can help you take these monthly payments down to a single payment and you'll, you'll be able to get out of this debt by way of a mortgage. Something Carl's family says he didn't sign. And if he did, they say he didn't understand it. And Greg says that he would never have let Carl sign. The rate of interest is astronomical. I've, we have never seen an interest rate that high. Does he have any chance of being able to pay that? No, no, not a chance. How does a mortgage like this happen? In this case, it went through a mortgage broker and lawyer who are supposed to look after your best interests. Why did no one stop it? That's what we're on a search to find out. At this house in Toronto. Hi, Christina. Hi, David. How are you? Yeah, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Another knock at the door led to a similar story. 88-year-old Danila Lim is blind. Her son, a retired Canadian soldier with PTSD, lives here too. Now her daughter, Christina, and son-in-law, William, are fighting to save the house. So somebody came to the house and informed my brother that there was a lien against the house. My brother really didn't understand what, what lien meant, but got intimidated by this person. When we heard the story, it was a total shock. There was a lot of anger, uh, thinking that how can people prey on two people who are, one is blind, visually impaired, senior, disabled. My brother himself is disabled as well. And like Carl, renovators showed up too. Any room that these renovators touched, they've destroyed it. The work is shockingly unprofessional. These huge gaps that are left at the top, the tiling that is incomplete. Show me some of the other things. Well, I mean, for one thing, the way they installed an oven, that's what? their finished product. That's how they decided it should be left. They just put laminate and cardboard that's to right. level it? To level the, to level the But ovens have... They have feet. feet. I guess they didn't know that they had feet they could level it with, I guess. And the flooring is coming apart. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. This is the laminate, it. and you can see the tile floor that's underneath it. Yeah, so there was a tile floor, a professionally done tile floor, yeah. had a couple of cracked tiles. And their solution to fixing two cracked tiles was to cover it with the cheapest laminate they could possibly find. So why didn't the family realize sooner? Well, this was happening in the midst of the COVID pandemic, and Christina is a nurse. But you didn't want to make your mom sick. Correct. I mean, they were safe in their home. At least that's what I, I thought that they were. They were safe from COVID. They were safe from COVID, not knowing that there would be these predators that would come knocking at your door. There is now a mortgage against this home. How much is that mortgage for? At this point, it's it's at least $500,000. It's huge. It's huge. And, you know, I feel like they're, they've been victimized. Um, and, you know, it made you feel like there, there's that sense of guilt to, of myself to say, well, where was I to protect them? Or where were we to protect them? Because for the whole year, they basically suffered in silence. We're learning the alleged scam has victims across Ontario, from St. Catharines to Peterborough, Barrie, Collingwood, Mississauga, and more. Many are now suing. Some acknowledge signing documents, but say if they did sign, they didn't understand. Do you feel that you've been taken advantage of? Yes. These people, if they, they pick in people, all the people, you know, the peop uh, vulnerable people. Vulnerable people. Yes. That's what You it feel targeted. Yes. Ernest. Hello. He said I was going to get all this money back. Wasn't going to cost nothing, but... What they said, I believe they, they're my buddies. Do you still believe they're your buddies? No, no. I was fed the line and I believed it. High interest mortgages. I'm just skimping by as it is with all my other bills. 
and more low quality renovations. So this is the kitchen they redid. Yeah. Did they put this microwave in? Yeah, just the microwave. I'm curious. Oh, no, no, look, look at that. Well, this isn't attached to anything, actually. I cannot have a bath because there's no spout to fill up the bathtub. Are you worried about losing your home? Yes, I am. I really am. I have to stay alive and fight this. <laughs> I'm 70 years old and I shouldn't be going through this. Bev reveals we aren't the only ones tracking the scheme. How did you find out that you'd fallen into this? I had uh, two detectives come to my door. So they said, well, you've been scammed for your house. The police told you that? Yes. Until the police came and told I, you? I didn't have a clue. Wow. So I just start to cry. As we've been investigating, so too have police. Moving into the renovations, poor quality. Constables Lisa Cruz and Aaron Fraser are with the Ontario Provincial Police. Hi, I'm David. Hi, David, I'm Lisa Cruz. Lisa? Aaron Fraser. Very good. Now partnering with police agencies across Ontario. So Aaron and I work for the Serious Fraud Office. Um, we're a specialty unit within the OPP. Um, that investigate major fraud cases. How elaborate is this scam? It's very elaborate. There's multi-layered, and we have uh, multiple victims across the province. Police won't say who they're investigating, but the scam they're tracking sounds very similar. They are misleading the homeowners into entering into contracts that are long-term. There are some like typical things that they put in their homes. So there's um, smart uh, smoke detectors and thermostats, often not even hooked up. And police say it varies from there. Fraudsters sometimes suggesting a financial grant, renovations or debt consolidation with the same end result. Homeowners are basically misled and duped into signing mortgage documents. But at rates that most people wouldn't be able to afford. Right, we're seeing um, rates up to 25%, um, which is very, very high. And then once the mortgage comes due, um, the homeowners essentially can't make those monthly payments anymore, um, almost forcing them into either selling their home or foreclosing. Is this a long fraud? I would like, call it a long fraud, yeah. yes. These fraudsters, they are adapting it as they go, so it's ever-changing. Um, and as we investigate it, um, we find different variations to it. And I think what could be happening is people might not even know their victim yet. As police pursue their investigation, we find the biggest consequence yet. All I know is that it's massive elder abuse. Our search for answers continues. It's David Common calling from CBC Marketplace. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. We're investigating what some call a loan to own scam. Purported victims across Ontario, homeowners like Carl, allegedly tricked into signing contracts and loans. He just believes everybody that comes to the door is there to do him a favor. It's a complex scheme, which escalates into a mortgage on their home with interest rates they say they cannot afford. She was devastated. She did not actually realize that all of these things were happening in front of her. It's unclear who's behind it. There are several companies providing services and knocking on doors and multiple lenders on the mortgage documents. But all the people we've met have at least one lender in common, Canada's Choice Investments. Marlene Hamilton is among them. I miss that. I know. She spent more than 40 years at this house in Port Hope. This was yours and dad's life. Gone. Lisa Amos is her daughter. <laughs> So that's home. Yeah, that's home. That was my home. 
this home that's been taken away from you, from your from mom. me, from my mom. I'm angry, I'm pissed off, I'm upset. Like, words can't describe how I feel right now. Unable to make the mortgage payments, Marlene lost the house last fall. All she remembers is people coming in and out of the house. People coming in to renovate. And sign this, sign this. Even though Lisa says her mom can't read. Did she know there was a mortgage on her place? No. All I know is that it's massive elder abuse. Documents show Marlene's mortgage went through this brokerage in Brampton. Not everyone used this one, but Carl and Danila did. Mortgage brokers are required to act in their clients' best interests, but both Carl and Danila are suing, saying Senta Mortgage Smart failed them. The brokerage says they are not involved in door-to-door -door sales and that full disclosure was made. They also say the clients were high risk and so private mortgage was the only option. But the regulator is taking a much closer look at Centum Mortgage Smart, and the Centum brand is actually severing ties, expressing distress over the situation. For most mortgage transactions, there's also a lawyer representing the borrower's interests. In Carl's case, the paperwork says that lawyer was a not Jane. They were paid a substantial amount of money for, you know, for services that uh, weren't actually performed or rendered properly. Carl's current lawyer, Greg Whedon, believes it was the people behind the alleged scam who brought in this lawyer. The same people show up at his door. They had a lawyer on the phone with them. It's pretty clear that if you're signing a 25% mortgage loan against your property, uh, you know, there would be some, some material questions that a lawyer would ask. And in this case, that wasn't done. Anant Jane is not involved in every case we're aware of, but is named in three other similar lawsuits, including Danila's, all allege professional negligence. He doesn't respond to our interview request, so we leave another at his office. His lawyer then tells us they're unable to comment on cases currently before the courts. In those lawsuits, Jane denies wrongdoing, saying his clients understood the documents and that he acted diligently and in good faith. Then there's the lender. Canada's Choice Investments isn't involved in every mortgage we've reviewed, but they are a lender for each of the people we've met. And across Ontario, our digging reveals of the 40 mortgages the lenders held in the last couple of years, more than half of those homeowners say they never sought a mortgage. And while they don't know who orchestrated the scheme, many believe Canada's choice is involved. The company won't talk on camera, but denies all allegations and says they have no connection to any door-to-door -door scheme. They say the mortgages were signed voluntarily and all above board. Corporate records show that a mailbox in there is their official address inside a UPS store. Well, in a statement, Canada's Choice tells us they rely on borrowers' lawyers to represent their clients' interests and that all business comes to them from mortgage brokers. In fact, Canada's Choice argues they may be a victim of a concerted group of seniors who are refusing to pay their loans back. They also say that they're cooperating with a law enforcement investigation. But we still have questions, so we're calling Anas Ayub, the sole director of Canada's Choice. Hello, Mr. Ayub, it's David Common from CBC Marketplace. I'm. I, it's the wrong time to call me, I can't speak right now. Oh, but but I, call my lawyer, you have, you have his information? I do, but we're just, we're trying to get to the bottom of why so many of your customers say they have mortgages they know. Oh, well, he's just gone and hung up. Meanwhile, in Stouffville, Ontario. Karen? Yes, David? Yes. Hi. Good to meet it's you. It's nice to meet you yeah. as well. Karen Ogden intervened just in time to save her parents' house, doing what police suggest, checking in with your loved ones. We are the lucky ones. We caught it in time before my parents tried to sell or before somebody came and put a foreclosure notice on the front door. Ultimately, a settlement ended what Karen believes should never have happened. Thankful that my mom still has her house. Do you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us all about it on email, Twitter, and Facebook.
five decades and still fighting for you. Investigating the cost of living. I've been watching it. Go, go, go. <laughs> Three dollars if I don't use it, that's a ripoff. We the people have the power! Our housing social safety net is broken. We're at a tipping point, so to speak. Why is it so, so expensive for women? Well, women pay more for lots of stuff. Yep. That's for sure. Aren't we, like, making less money than them? Yep. That's sick. Testing products and promises. Does the diamond itself maintain the value? Do you know what the four C's are? He's going to save almost $4,000 over the course of two years. All of us can do this. That's not good. These are pretty dangerous helmets. It's fake. It is. It's a fake helmet. Well, that's a big shock. <laughs> I don't think there's any chihuahua in him. That right there is unethical. They're selling something that isn't correct. Revealing what you can trust about what you've been told. Is it good for you? No. This is a sugar bomb, is what this is. It says 34 here, 40 inch waist. Are we surrounded by palm oil? We are in a hotbed of palm oil right okay. here. 14, 16. Most people would not imagine putting that much salt into just one serving. That is mind boggling. Why do you want people across the country to see this? Could have been done sooner, and it should have been. Exposing scams. Are you worried about losing this house? I worry, yeah. I worry, yeah. None of this is real. The company doesn't even exist. There's nothing gray area about it. It is absolutely fraud. Oh, they made all kinds of excuses. It's massive elder abuse. We can shut cancer down in one treatment. Confronting the people behind the claims. People have died. To you and spending large amounts going. of money. It's not true. How would your customers feel to hear these results? I think our customers have a lot of confidence in us. Sir, you have uh, many people who allege that you've uh, ripped them off. Do you have anything to say to them at all? Getting the goods when you need to know. You're saying that you've done all of these laundry lists of things. It's not a laundry list. It's didn't help this family. Is it a problem the way that it's showing up? Is this the transparency you want? No. Do you feel like you're completely alone in this? I did before you guys showed up. Our 50th season at Marketplace comes to an end, but our work continues. So if you have a story you think we should investigate, reach out, because this is your Marketplace.